Hey, it's Lenny Schmidt. Look right there. It says that at the bottom of the screen. Welcome to Lenny Schmidt's quarantine comedy. Uh, it's Friday nights. It's not live. We're not live tonight. However, um, this is per request to one of my Patreon members. He said to me uh, just a few days ago, hey, has BT ever been on the show? You know, the comedian from Ohio, your good friend. And I go, why, yes, BT has been on the show. Uh, BT was on uh, yeah, May 17th. Uh, in the earlier episodes that uh, are not uploaded on YouTube as of yet. So I thought, hey, hey, why not upload BT's episode uh, on a Friday night when we are not live? So we're not live, but here is the episode with BT uh, back on May 17th. If you enjoy the show, as always, we're here every Monday and Wednesday live streaming on YouTube. Uh, we speak to entertainers, comics, uh, all kinds of people that work in live performance who aren't working. Every time we turn around, our shows are getting canceled more and more. Uh, so uh, it gives them a chance to catch up with you and a chance for you to catch up with them. If you enjoy the show and you want to support the show, help us out. Bam, you can do so right there. <clears throat> There's a couple of options. Best one, really, go to my website, LennySchmidt.com, slash if you can. You can check those out. Go there. There's a number of options. You can go to Venmo, Cash App, all this stuff. <clears throat> we don't have any sponsors here at the show. Anything you do to support the show will help me keep it going and help me bringing entertainers on uh, streaming. There you go. So without any further ado, uh, why don't we catch up with uh, an episode from May 17th, 2020, last year? May 17th. Seems like a long time ago. I remember I thought everything was going to open up shortly after this. This is what I think I talk about it a lot here. I go, hey, we're opening it up again. So enjoy that part of it. This is BT uh, from May 17th of 2020 on Lenny Schmidt's Quarantine Comedy. Thanks. <laughs> Let's get right to the guest, folks. My good friend, uh, he was here. He's been here seven times. I think we screwed this up numerous times. And uh, we're going to bring him out here now. Folks, give it up to the one and only, very talented, very funny, uh, very energetic, the one and only BT, all the way from Ohio. Uh, he'll be here seconds away from BT. There he is. Uh, BT's connected to audio. Hopefully, this is going to go well. Say something. Finally. Can you hear me? Bam! Yes, two days in a row. I have crushed it. I have mastered technology. Yes, man. It's about time, brother. Hold on. Let me put my headphones in. Hold on. Yeah, go. It only took me a month. It took me a month to figure everything out. You know what? I tried, I, I, I wanted to tell you that on the other one. I was like, but, you know, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. But I was like, what are we doing? But now that you said that you're going to Zoom, and you, your whole world's going to open up. Hold on. Let me get yeah. my headphones in. Everything's good, man. I got a green screen. I got all kinds of stuff. I can't, I change, oh, I was going to change my little name. I haven't done it yet. Let me change the name. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I can, I hear, can me? hear you, buddy. Everybody can hear you. Everybody say hello to my good friend, BT. <laughs> yes, man. I'm so happy, brother. Good to see you, man. It's good to see you, buddy. It's good to see you. Hang on. Seriously, me, okay. I am. I'm I'm typing. I don't have a producer, so I do everything on my own. It's very. Confusing. I can tell. I can tell. I can. Yeah, it sucks, <laughs> it sucks, right? Quality of shit. Uh, no, I did not say that. Did not say. I'm just joking. Come on, man. It's good to see you, brother. Good, good to, good to see, see you, man. You. How you doing, man? Are you getting out? Are you doing stuff? Dude, I I, I just started a podcast. I'm, I've done eight episodes. I've uh, and I'm doing uh, thinking about doing some other stuff. I'm just, you know, I I took this time. I, I'm going to seize this opportunity, man, and just go for things I, that you know, you know, how we get to working, and sometimes you can't really stop because you got to make that money. And yeah. now that everybody was forced to, dude, it's a great opportunity to just expand out. Who knows? I might be a male stripper, man. You never know. I mean, <laughs> you, you, know? you, you could. I'll be your manager. You can be a male stripper. I'll be your manager. I'll be the guy collecting money on the side. <laughs> Yeah, you ready for a chocolate shake? Yeah, I can do it, man. I, can, I, can. <laughs> I know you can. <laughs> yeah, man, but I'm just happy to. Matter of fact, I took the um, went to some of my folks this weekend. I rode my motorcycle down from Indianapolis to Oklahoma on my bike. So, okay. man, it was a good time, brother. And uh, nice. Me and my yeah, me and my mom sat there. We just ate, and I saw my dad. And they both they both separately talked about how the biggest mistake in their lives was marrying each. Other. Oh no, and really? That shit. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God, my, my mom was like, my mom never had beer. She goes, you had a beer? I go, no, I have my shoes. She goes, the only time I had a beer 
was after me and your daddy got married. And she goes, that was the biggest mistake I ever did in my life. And then my dad was like, boy, your mama. And they both said that. But yet still, they wonder why I never, ever, ever, ever want to get married. And they, they wonder why. <laughs> yeah, they wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Because of you. It's the example you've been setting me. Well, are they still, honest, are they still ahead, together? Are they still together? No, 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 no. Are you crazy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. My, my dad still lives in Muskogee, Oklahoma. My mom lives in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And honestly, the, the, the greatest, there's only two photos we've ever taken of the family being together, ever. And that was on a Christmas one time. And I lie to you not, they both, they both worked at different Walmarts. And, and the best Christmas we ever had was we all got together and, we told, and they told Walmart stories. That was the greatest uh, Christmas we ever had. I dude, swear to God. I, dude, you should write some of those down and write a book. Man, yeah, we'll have to hear about Walmart stories. I'm, my mom broke up fights and shit at Walmart. How my dad, how my dad had chased this dude around like the entire, uh, in, the entire parking lot and chased him to tell him to give back the merchandise he stole. And so my dad did that. And but the funniest thing about it was he did that one time, made a dude give the stuff back. Cause my dad was, you know, a pretty big dude, or whatever. But the one time he said, "Henry, that guy stole something." My dad said it too. It was like about six four. He had cornrows and muscle. My dad go. That ain't my job. <laughs> I don't think he stole anything. <laughs> yeah. He looks all right to me. I didn't see anything. I didn't see. I think he brought that stuff in here with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, man, it, but it was the best time, man. That's how. I, I mean, honestly, I'm just a country boy at heart, man. That's what I do, man. We went down. We told a Walmart story. My parents retired from Walmart about three three months apart. True story. Oh, yeah, really? Really? Story. Oh, good. All right. I'm a product of Walmart, man. I really am. That's why You're I'm so cheap and everything. <laughs> yeah, man. The WM, baby. The WM. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Dude, you're throwing Walmart down the signals life. and everything, man. Walmart for life, baby. That's what I do. Walmart for what life. I That's fantastic. <laughs> Um, How you been, right, man? I'm good, How man. I got a bunch. Of, I'm good. I got a bunch of people chiming in and they have questions for you. Hold on. I'm going to make oh, yeah. sure. I don't know okay. if you can see these, but I'm going to give you one of my good. Uh, Vince Mulligan. Who comes? Who's a, a carnival cruiser? Comes to a lot of shows. He knows you. I think okay. he knows you from the ship. He wants to know what kind of bike you drive. He wants to know what you're driving. I, ha I have a 2016 uh, Ducati Multistrada Pikes Peak version. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's got four four different modes to ride. I can go track, uh, sport, urban, enduro. That's what I ride when it rains. And I go uh, and touring, which uh, when I you know I traveled a long ways, whatever touring. But yeah, it's a 2016 Ducati Multistrada Pikes Peak version. Cause they come out with four different versions. Was that like a hybrid? Yeah, it's like a, it's a sport touring bike. So right, it's right. like like when you have with the bags off, it looks speedy. But you put the bags on, and it still looks custom. It still looks like you know it can still go, which it can. So yeah, okay. so yeah, okay, yeah, great bike, great bike. All right, there you go. There's your, there's your answer. My friend Sandy says, uh, <laughs> uh, Sandy's my ex-girlfriend I dated when I was in high school. <laughs> who were good still, for you. We're still really good friends with her. And her husband, Tom, by the way, who they were quarantined away from each other. I'm going to tell the story really quick. They were quarantined oh away from each other for two months. And they just got back together this week. Monday, good, I ooh, ooh, I bet they had a good time, if you know what I mean. Good yeah, that's them. what I heard. I don't know. I'm trying to keep the show G rated. Um, well, well, I know, but hey, kidding. nine months, they have a little quarantine. How about a little Q? They have a little Q running around. I don't see any more kids in Fandy's future. She's, guys, never she's, having, she's having too much fun playing with a grandchild right now. Trust me. Hey, it, do, hey it doesn't matter, man. You can still, you can still do that. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a new world out there, bro. It's a new world. Hey, Tom has another baby. He's going to quarantine himself. Uh, <laughs> Good I, yeah. She says uh, she saw your arms, but if you're ready to see more, she's ready for you to start stripping right now. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. oh, she, oh. oh that's, all, that's all. Hey, you got to pay wow. for the rest. Wow. You got to pay for the rest. All right. All right. We'll throw a little Venmo tip chart out there on your thing, yeah. man. That'll you'll get it. <laughs> You no, for, for every me. five bucks taped, I'm not putting. I know, dude. I'm a comic. It's a tough time right now. Oh my god, yeah. I'm glad we're doing a mask to go into the building. It's the greatest time now because, man, we can go in and get what we got to get. If you know what I mean. If, yeah. <laughs> if those stimulus checks don't come in, I'm using that mask, all right, and need to get groceries. You know? <laughs> dude, I got a feeling you you would be the type of guy that people would know who you are, even with the fucking mask. You know yeah, I mean? because you I get so much I, energy. I, You're like, hey, I need yeah. your money. They'd be like, hey, PT, is that you? <laughs> no, it ain't me. But anyway, hey, thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, thanks. You let mine. <laughs> I'll bring the money back. I promise. I just need it for now. Yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> I, I couldn't do it. But yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, it's a tough time. But hey, still, I think it'll all work out. You know what I mean? I really think so. I think so, personally. I, dude, I, you know what? The news every day, This I stopped watching the news about a week ago because it's just fucking depressing every day. You know what exactly. I mean? But this week, every day has been good. Every day this was good news this week. I was for you, 
<laughs> okay, well for me, <laughs> for you, y'all. Did you see the cop with with the with his? All right, okay. His, uh, All right, let me that, rephrase. <laughs> God, I sound like a horrible fucking racist yeah, now. Oh my I god, know. what a great, a great week. week! Only one black guy died in Minnesota. What's the big deal? I Fantastic! Mean, oh god, it's incredible. What a great week. Yeah. Anyway, for, yeah. dude, no, if you're no, a white no. guy, things are looking yeah. great. <laughs> hey, <laughs> today we're going back in time. No, oh, um, great. no, but you know, no, but you're right though, man. It, it, you know what? It's like this. I always I say this. If you don't watch the news, it's I think actually it's a better world if you don't watch the news because right. I see that. But I go out in the world, and I mean honestly, I don't see any of that. Like people speak and they wave. Where I come, I mean, where I'm at, it's like. It's like, and then I watch you. I go, really? This is happening. That's why it's it's amazing to me. It's almost like it's. I'm, I feel like I'm watching a movie when I'm watching it because right. I never see the bad stuff. I, I mean, maybe it's because how I live my life. I like to be. I like to be around positivity. I don't like negative. I, you know, I try not to say bad words like can't and don't or hate. You know, what I mean, because that that's just. I think it it brings that shit around you. So I like to think right. everything. I like to think everything positive, but at the same time. I don't want to be stupid. I don't hear about it. So it's like, oh no, there's no news. So I don't want to be that way. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, a, it's like a, it's, it's like a, it's a slippery slope. You know, I, like I want to be informed, but I don't want to get deep, deep up in it because it, it drives me nuts. Yeah, you know? you know what? One thing I've also I've always respected about you as a comic is, uh, you and I have a similar approach to our comedy, to where I'm a big like I mentioned this in an earlier podcast that I don't like to divide the room. So when mm -hmm. I go up on stage, I don't do a lot of political material, and I don't do, I don't talk about this group is bad or that group is bad. I mean, I think we just try to talk about something that's funny. You know what I mean? You just try to you bring, I, to me, comedy is something that brings people together, not something that divides people. But you know what though? Now though, I feel though that like, even saying that, even th then people feel like it's like, I feel like they're so del or they feel like they have to speak out on something that you yeah. go, really, you got offended at that. I mean, and this is true. So I remember like toward the end, uh, one of the crews, uh, this lady, she got mad that I mentioned something about the shootings, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so she was upset. But so I talked to her. I tell everybody, I said, if you get offended, just, you know, like, hey, can I talk to you for a second? And I'll treat you like a bad ex-boyfriend. I will look at you in the eye. I will listen to you. But I won't, it won't register. I'll, just, I'll nod my head like I'm listening, but I'm really thinking of a better audience member. But she said, I don't, she, <laughs> but she, she, she goes, she goes, I was really offended at what you said about the shootings and everything. But she goes, but if you want to talk about the gays or, or certain racial groups, I don't care about that. But it's when, and I'll go, really? And that's when I was like, okay. And I, I literally shut her off, but I listened to her anyway. You know what I mean? So, so everybody's going to be offended. And it, to me, you just got to do your stuff and be you. I mean, I can't be some, I can't go on stage and be a Bill Burr because that's not me, but I, right. I can't go, but I, you know, but at the same time, I wish I was as clean as Nate Bargatze, but I'm not. So I just try to be right. me. And sometimes I go with the mood I'm in. I mean, I've gone with, with, like, I, I watch the news and then I go out of my cabin, I go on stage and I'm just fucking rage. But yeah. then like, I see people having a good time. And so I go, okay, I'm good. And I'll start getting a Mac. So, you know, I try to play it by feel and, and, Sometimes I, I mess with the audience and I just want to go straight material. So I can go either way. But yeah, I try to just, I just want to keep it fun, man, and funny. You know what I mean? Maybe right. make a little bit of a point, but, you know, just have fun, man. That's what this job is about. I think we've lost, sometimes we lose the fun in comedy. That's yeah. why I like people like like Dave Battelle, man. It's just, it's silly, funny, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's just funny, man. Jeff Ross, yeah. the same way. He's just a funny so, yeah. dude. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, I live, you know, I live in LA. So every time you go to any type of stage, you're open mic in LA. It's 90% material about Trump. It's literally 90% anti-Trump material. And at some point, you're like, I get it. I get it. I, exactly. I get exactly. It. Like, I like, like here, you know, I live in the Midwest where it didn't matter, but like, like there was a comedy competition, and and I swear to God, there were five guys in a row. They all had flannel, the round glasses, and a beard. And they all, and I swear to God, five guys in a row I go, like, what do you, it, 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 it maybe, I mean, the thing, the thing about anything in life, you want to stand out. So why right. would you want to be like somebody if that's not you? You right. know, so as I try to do, and, and, and I've done that, I've done uh, 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 the dime, uh, what's it called? The dime room that Adam Hunter has. The, yeah, it's uh, the, the dime. The, it's called the dime. The, it's the, right there in uh, Fairfax. Yeah, the across dime. The yeah. Cancers. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, people feel like they have to do that and they're going to have a different take in which they might. But still, it's like it gets old, man. Be you. Talk about something nobody else is going to talk about. Or yeah. me, like I finally feel like my calling is is racing and motorcycles and, and, and yeah, movies. Yeah. I, I love movies, man. And that's why I like about you because we talk about acting, how much you love acting. And that's why I give you credit because you want to act more, yeah. but you, you kind of give it up because you want to 
want to see your family, which I thought was great. How you fly back and forth yeah. to Chicago to see your kids. I mean, that shit touched me, man, because that was me. I'm selfish. Oh, I'd thanks, stay man. in LA and I'd be going, <laughs> I'd be going to audition because it's all about me. That's why. That's why I'm in a single bedroom apartment right now talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> a single bedroom apartment right now. All right, fair no. enough. As long as it's good, man. Yeah. Well, I, I, actually, actually, I share a room in a house with a, I got a great roommate and her kid. Let me tell you something. Her kid is the greatest thing in the world. He graduated from kindergarten yesterday and they couldn't, I mean, from, <laughs> from, 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 from preschool. Dude, those are the from best. Preschool, dude, from preschool and, and, and they couldn't go, right? So the new thing, the teachers came, the teacher came to the house and put a little, and put a little a thing in the ground and said, here is a preschool graduate. And she gave and she made him a little cap and he stood in front of the, th it was beautiful, bro. I yeah, mean, yeah. It, it, it touched my heart, man. It's like, in my, I don't know about you, my, in my older age, I mean, I said, where's my maturity? I feel like I'm becoming a pussy because I, I almost start crying, man, because it, it looks so cute. He had his little, like a, he had his little, it's almost me, see this. Can you see that? See? Look at that. Oh, right on, right on. That's beautiful, man. I love it. That's the bus. Dude, that shit. I mean, honestly, I was like, ugh. I was doing shit like, uh, I mean, <laughs> this shit touched me, bro. Because, you know, I, I know, like, now, a, I always... I get, I'm getting life late in the sense of now I understand more what life is about. Like when you said you went to go see your daughters in Chicago and you gave up this to sacrifice that, that shit hit me, man, because that's what it's like. I mean, earlier on, I wouldn't have done it, but now I understand that now. But, you know, I'm, I can't say I'm too old, but there's no way in the world I'm going to have a kid now. You know what I mean? Because by the time the kid's born, and I won't make it to graduation. I mean, <laughs> you know what I, mean? I don't think I'd make it to middle school graduation. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm living through this kid, you know? So that's it's good. it's good dude that's the best man graduating kindergarten that's the all that's the best time i remember that dude, that's how he's all great, fired man. up yeah right exactly he is I mean, he don't even he don't even he he didn't grasp it at all because i go hey buddy let's get a picture he goes, nah. I said, all right man but he, he didn't get it though but but that's beautiful because that's that's him being a kid and i love it you know i always say i always say this i said if your kid doesn't make you laugh in a certain way uh, or make up a song in their head only they know the words to or they don't like to run around naked or they don't like to swim you're gonna have a fucked up kid there's something wrong with your kid if your kid doesn't like one of those things yeah <laughs> seriously man if your kid doesn't like he didn't like to be naked if your kid doesn't like to go swimming they don't make a song up in their head only they know the words to you know or they don't make you laugh in a certain way something's wrong with your kid you need to get that kid checked out i mean seriously man <laughs> think about that all kids like one of those things all of them they all like one of those things all one <laughs> they all they all like one of those things if they don't like any of those because something's wrong with that kid get him checked out that's a cool so, h2 kindergarten though though but he's got to be a handful during this quarantine bro you know what i mean it's got to so, be you're when yeah. you're in the house it's you your roommate and your son and her, and her son well let me tell you something this is the cheating part i mean this is where you go thank technology for some reason kids nowadays love youtube and they watch this, this axel yeah. show and some and some other animal shows and man if you got to do something you you put youtube but let them watch youtube and you go do what you got to do. And that, that'll last them for an hour. They, they'll give you a good hour to do what you got to do. So I go do, I go do my yoga and I go do my indoor on the bike. And then by the time I'm done, then he gets a little restless and we go outside and we get on a scooter or we'll ride bicycles and he'll come back inside. But yeah, man. So you got an hour. Give your kid YouTube TV, which is cheating, by the way. And then after that, he goes out and he's good. So that's the way to cheat. That's the way to cheat. So yeah. Yeah, man. Nice. Right on. Good for him. All right. Well, good, yeah, man. And, that and, sounds cool, and, man. You, and, now, and, when and, did you... Go ahead. No, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start cheating. No, I'm go gonna, ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him uh, some vegan chicken nuggets, and he won't know about it. I'm going to slip them into him. I'm going to purchase them online. When I get off, when I get off here, I'm going to purchase some vegan chicken nuggets, and they're going to come in, and I'm, and I'm going to make them for him, and we're not going to tell him to see if he knows the difference. Well, they won't. Vegan nuggets are easy to cheat on because chicken nuggets aren't real chicken anyway. You yeah, so I mean? the chicken, uh, yeah, it's like pink slime crap. So yeah, yeah, they're, they're called nugs. So I'm gonna get him some nugs, and he won't know the difference. And we'll see, we'll see. I'm looking forward to it. Now, aren't you? Are you a full on vegan? No, but it's like this: if something comes with cheese on it, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not like I'm not like a, a vegan Nazi. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm a, yeah, I'm more, I'm more of a vegan nationalist, you know what I mean? Like, like I'll talk to people who eat cheese, and if cheese comes with it, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'll eat it, but I won't freak out like, is this cheese? And so, you know, it, it, I'm not that into it, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I don't eat meat, so I'm good like that. I'm good like that. Okay, all right, 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 right on. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. one of the, dude, one of the things you do, I think, is really cool, is that you do that one minute, uh, the one minute uh, movie reviews or whatever. You know what yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Yeah, thanks, those, man. Dude, well, dude you no know problem. Why, you know why? 
tell people this. I said, a minute of me is about all anybody can stand. So I figured <laughs> if, if I can, if I can do those, you can watch a minute review, right? Everybody's got a minute of time. So that's why I think it's perfect, man. A minute and bam, I'm in, I'm out. Dude, a minute with you is like an hour and a half with anyone else. It's a lot of energy, man. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? You're like, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Try living right. in this body. Try living <laughs> in this body. You know? <laughs> Dude, I got man. enough hanging out with that. Um, all right, wait. Oh, I want to. Yeah. I want to show. I want to show one of your videos right now. Hold on a second. I want to see if this works. I tried oh, this yesterday. Okay, and it worked perfectly. So let's. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's give it a let's shot. See. Let's see. Give it a shot, bro. Let's see. Hey, it's BT with the BT podcast review and uh this episode is about a podcast called tales of the virus and it's by uh wait a minute uh, billy d washington wait a minute there we go deals with what we're going through now with the virus but in a slightly twisted way it's uh it's funny it's got a taste of the macabre uh think tale think uh tales from the crypt meet twilight zone with a little bit of humor thrown in it's beautifully crafted storytelling at its finest and just when you're going it's like oh my god this gets creepy he throws in a laugh that you don't expect it's uh think vincent price meets morgan freeman it's it's great it's funny it's called tales of the virus episode five is a perfect example I'm not going to give it away but if you guys have about five minutes in your day give it a listen like i said it's creepy but it's funny and it's engaging tales of the virus billy d washington it's on spotify it's on itunes give it a listen tell me what you think until then burn. yeah it took me uh it took me a while but i got it up there so there man I, I can't believe you did that you know what's funny you say that is that is that um why you were uh, contacting me again? I, I I hooked up Roku all by myself, and that's a big thing, bro. I can't do it, but I hooked up Roku on my TV all by myself, and I started at like eight twenty, and I go, oh shit, ladies, gonna hit me in forty minutes. I'll be good, and I just start getting it when you hit me up. That's why I was yeah? a little bit late getting in. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah. good for you, dude. It takes me. Yeah. I usually I usually get close to those things, get them done, and then uh, yeah. and then they're wrong. They go, everything goes yeah. wrong. I'm like, oh, yeah. shit, what's going yeah. on? This is yeah. supposed to be happening. <laughs> delete, delete. Punk. That was like the yeah. first month of this show was me going, no, fucking yeah. back. I don't trust me. Show. I know. Yeah, I, I know. know you were here for two of them. One of them, we couldn't hear you at all. That was the vast one. You I just could see there. me, but you couldn't hear me. It yeah. was you for like 20 minutes going, yeah, it was it was like it was like a like a Pink Floyd, uh, I, you know, I, the lips smooth, but I can't hear what you say. Yeah, right yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, comfortably <laughs> numb. I was comfortably numb. Yes, comfortably All numb. All right, right on. Let's see. Uh, hey, Brett, my cousin Ryan's here. Hey, Ryan, how are you, buddy? Ryan, what's up, I bro? Mailed you some CDs or, or not CDs, but download cards for uh, you and your friends today. Uh, who else? That's ah, that's everybody, man. Okay. All right. The Runyons are here. The Runyons are uh, they're my stalkers, BT. I don't know if I mentioned that. Good for you, bro. You got stalkers. stalkers. Yeah, just the Runyons and uh, Brenda and all my Patreon members. I have seven Patreon members. That's Good it. for you, man. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. It. Yeah, but they're, they're they're at the show every night. And my friend Michelle also. Michelle's here. Michelle tunes in all the time, but she's usually doing something on the side. Last week she was doing something. She was watering something. I don't know. Oh, oh okay. Oh, well, nice, man. Good for you guys, man. Good for you. I mean, uh, good for you. Yeah, thanks, man. So, uh, oh. what else, man? I was uh, so. Uh, now you went and saw your mom in North Carolina. and came back, right? No, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, yeah, Oklahoma. Oklahoma yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I drove and down. Now you're yeah. back. Now you are back where you where you're living at, right? Back in Indy. Uh, like I said, did a did a podcast today with my very best friend, and uh, that was a good good one, man. We we hit on some like I've known him for over thirty years, so we we hit on some topics. How you know we especially your relationship. We had our ups and downs, but even my best friend, like uh, like whenever I used to do the road, I'd stay with him, and I I, I I'm the, I, I'm the original fuck your couch because i used to sleep on his couch that's why his couch smells like fungus man because of my feet i used to sleep on his couch and i ruined about oh. three of his couches i ruined about three and, and so that's the reason why he has my netflix account so that's my way of giving back to him so he watches the zombies <laughs> Dude, you can't netflix. say that on social media netflix is oh, listening i just did it what they gonna do so yeah <laughs> Dude, i so, don't know who knows yeah. what they'll do now Everybody needs well, you know place. what? Well, they but they owe me money anyway because I was one of the original, and I mean, it's bottom line, I was one of the original uh, comedy uh, specials on Netflix back in the day. Um, you talked to talk to Steve Hostetter. We shot a special. Me and Spanky, not Spanky Brown, but the white Spanky. We we shot a special. I remember and, Spanky, uh, yeah. Yeah, and we and we uh and it floated around. We were supposed to sell it to somebody else. Well, long story short, ended up on Netflix, one of the first specials on Netflix. And I was like, how do I get paid for this? And Netflix was like, we don't know. I was like, really? You don't know? You know how Hollywood is, man. <laughs> they know. know everything. Yeah, we're they know. Not you sure. don't know. 
yeah we're gonna exactly. have to talk to a guy and look at the numbers and do the thing yeah <laughs> exactly. Exactly. we'll get back to you we'll get back to you yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure you will. exactly yeah because i did remember i did blind date and i lived in la i did blind date and then i did another one that was exactly like blind date but it shot a floor below where blind date was and i remember they called me i go how'd you get my number they go don't worry about it hey, listen do you want to do this show i said okay yeah. i'll do it Man, and, and that's and that's what I miss about L.A., man, is that I tell people all the time, no matter how jaded you get with L.A., the greatest thing about that place was the promise of a new day because yeah. you never knew what the next day. I remember like when, when Craigslist first came about, I did like a voiceover and got 50 bucks one day. One of his dude's apartment did a voiceover. They gave me 50 bucks on the spot. I did like a web, a web uh, episode or something. I got, you know, a little money. I mean, in a day. So the promise of – that's what I miss about L.A. is the promise of a day, bro. I mean yeah. – it's kind of like a lottery aspect. It's like every day is like, you know, every day you wake up, you don't know what's going to happen. Anything can happen. I always joke that you're one phone call away from your life changing. That dude is so, it is, man. It's like, yeah. it's, like it's like the mega lottery. They go, hey, like, I need a guy who's a, a kind of a burly guy, a hockey fan, a Midwest kind of accent. I got just the guy, you know what I mean? Right. Like somebody knows you. Or somebody handed a, a black guy, energetic, kind of main stream um kind of gets on your nerves annoying i know just the guy <laughs> so so guy who yeah. never sleeps you know what i mean what feet I, smell like funions yeah, never sleep yeah <laughs> yeah rides a motorcycle yeah i mean so yeah <laughs> man, it. it's, it's, that that that's what i miss about LA. and i and honestly from the bottom i always say this and i always mean it is there's not a day goes by i don't miss being out there there's not a day goes by but I know I couldn't have survived this virus, though, if I lived out there. Dude, you know it's man? a different world. They're so strict about everything out here. They're just open today. They just opened up retail stores today. So, yeah, well, you know, I mean, at least you guys are smart about it here, man. Honestly, I, I never noticed a difference here. I never noticed. I mean, right. I mean, you go inside, I mean, you go inside a restaurant, you do, but you just, I mean, yeah, yeah. Stupid. Yeah. I, you're going, oh, we're never going to survive this if, if that attitude, but I mean, but it is what it is. So, I'm kind of glad I'm here, you know, so I'm just trying, like I said, man, I'm just trying to take advantage of this time now. And I feel like it's my time to seize opportunities. That's what I'm trying to do right now. You know? Um, all right. I have another question from Keith Runyon. This is one of the stalkers he wants to know if comedians <laughs> stand in front of the laugh factory as day labor. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yes, That's we do. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, yeah. The cool thing about them is they don't pay you for the day labor. Yeah. <laughs> you put it at the left factory. You stand in that line all day long, and then you get up on stage for your four minutes, and then you leave, and that's, Dude, that's it. Funny. That's yeah. funny. And they charge that's you twelve fifty for a beer. There you go. It's a yeah. good. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a good life. That's fun. I've done that before, man. When I when I met, I I performed at the Laugh Factory when I had great great management. When they dropped me, I literally had to get back in line, literally, and do it all yeah. over again. I know. I remember I did the line thing just back when I started out. I did that stand in line thing. I used to do it every Tuesday. And uh, yeah. one, one night I did it and I was one of the last guys to go on. And it was probably Jamie had already left for the night. There was only four people in the room. And this guy comes up to me and he goes, do you really want to go on? I go, I've been here for eight fucking hours. Yes, I do want to go on. And he was so mad at me. He was so, he's like, fine, fine. If you didn't go up. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I went up and I grabbed, I, they introed me and I just sat down at the table with the four people and talked to them for my 10 minutes. And then good for you. Left. Yeah. And then, but they were, he was pissed. He wanted to go home. I'm like, dude, I've been well, here all day. All night yes. I've been here. You bumped me five job. times for guys, by the way. So yes, yes, man. It's what we do, bro. I mean, honestly, you know what we are? Honestly, it's like, everybody sees the big guys. Everybody sees the Chappelle's, the, uh, the, the Daniel Tosh's or, or whatever, you know, the birds, but they don't see the dudes. Like we're like the offensive linemen, man. We're the ones that, you know, like we, we're just grinding, bro. We're fucking grinding. We're the ones we're the, that, we're the you know, JV. We're like that old, what was no, that we're old? not Jay. No, we're not JV. What was that old NFL? What was that old football league they used to play everywhere? That was not. That was almost like a oh, semi tough. Remember semi pro, semi pro yes. league. Yeah. Remember those? No, 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 no. But we're we're fucking pros. But we're just the grinders, bro. We're the ones yeah, that like grinders. you know, like like when they say he's retired, he's twenty years in the league. Are you fucking twenty years in the league? You know what I mean? Yeah. We're those dudes, man. We're the I had ones no idea. That like, it was around twenty years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a third and two. We're taking up the middle. Touchdown. We're yeah. those guys, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and it almost makes it, but it almost makes it more fulfilling in the sense of we earn those last we get. Yeah. Sometimes when the famous guys, they'll get, they'll give them that first five where we earn everything we do. And it's almost more, and it almost more fulfilling until we look at, until we look at our paycheck. Who's, well, I was just you talking know? to, uh, yesterday, Mike Siegel was on. He's a good friend of mine who also, works, I love uh, Siegel. Yeah. He's a comic, but he, we were talking about that when you're famous, you get, uh, eight minutes, uh, right away. Like when you get yeah. on stage, you got eight, eight, eight minutes. 
and then yeah. you're great. But after seven or eight minutes, man, if you're not delivering jokes, you're just like everyone else. And he's like, people are, gonna else. Just, people are gonna leave and go, fuck this guy. What happened to him? Yeah, man. What happened to him? Yeah. You know, you're just yeah. people leaving. You're like, yeah, like that. Yeah. So it's it's more pressure that they have, but you know, I mean, they're making more money too. So I mean, honestly, so good for them. But yeah, it's more pressure on them. So like with us, I mean, we're still constantly grinding. You know, we still grinding. We're still writing years. We're not be we're not we may not be household names, but we still do what we do. You know, we well, still do talk, what we do. Talking about um, like I, we have this conversation with somebody recently about talking about um there's a uh, making it is a relative term like people when you yes. start out you're thinking making it is like getting your own tv show and all this stuff but i think right. as time goes by you realize i think making it is just being able to make a living doing what you love and those are the grinders i think yes like you're not yeah. a household name but if you're working you know i've been doing this 33 years now 32 33 years yeah this is pretty much yeah. what i do so you know okay. sure i don't have any other skills that's part of it yeah. but you know that's let's just leave that aside Okay, well, let me ask you a question, because I've asked every comic this that's, that's been around for a while, and I mean it dead serious. And and uh, I go, does it does it affect you or that you've been around for so long and that you're not a household name? That does, does it does it does it you know hit you like like disappoint you or make you? No, uh, actually, the longer the longer I've been around, I think uh, mm -hmm. when I started out, I wanted to be a household name. But now yeah. I kind of like the fact I can make a living and nobody knows who I am. I don't know. I know I have friends who everybody fucking knows them. And every time you walk into public, the rooms, you can feel the energy and people change. I don't I don't know if I want to be that guy anymore. You know what I mean? I don't know. I like yeah. the fact I'm making a living. and I can still go yeah. to Target. You know what I mean? Like I just watched the um, I watched. Did you watch the last dance? The Bulls thing? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Well, they talked about that level that Jordan was on, even compared to other basketball players, even guys like Kerr and those were talking about Jordan. He's like, you got to understand Jordan couldn't even go to this, go check his mail. I mean, he's just, you know, he's one of those guys, you can do a certain amount of celebrity where everyone knows you, you can't do anything. And you're, you know, you're a really big name. Guys like Michael Jackson would rent out movie theaters to go watch a movie on their own. You know what I mean? Yeah. And do something like that. But I kind of like the fact that I can make a living and, uh, it, it doesn't to me it's not so much about being a household name anymore now it's about being able to provide my kids with some sort of decent future and take care of my retirement and live the life i want to live i think it's about quality of life so i'm really happy about that yeah i mean i like to have a little more money whatever but yeah and and just to be like the last I know, the last three or four years has been really good. I I was able to go to europe and watch motorcycle races man oh yeah and, i remember that that's really cool bro yeah, and take I you know I took a a, a, a racing class in uh, I mean uh, yeah a, a track day class in uh, in England right before the Grand Prix started. Now you know and I, I rode on the back of a of, of a of a motorcycle of a champion. And we did we he did a wheelie at a hundred miles an hour and changed gears in the air with my fat ass on the back. So <laughs> yeah, man. So I, I I've been living that life, you know, and 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 I love it, and I want more of that. So like. It's almost like Easy E said. He goes, "I really, I rather deal with the numbers than the name." You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I'd rather have I'm, the I'm, income and not necessarily the fame. Yeah, you know I mean? man. I wouldn't mind yeah. have the money is one thing. The household name and money don't go inside to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I could make a living, like if you're a really good writer or director or yes. whatever, you know what I mean? Then yes. you're you're great. Nobody knows who you are, but you're making plenty of money. So who gives a shit? Sp speaking of that, here's what I want to do. I'm I'm gonna put you on the spot, but. I made a I made a, 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 a independent movie. I'm gonna send you this. I'm gonna send you that on your messenger after we get through, and I want you to watch. It's 14 minutes of your life, but it's my movie. Okay. I wrote, I wrote, directed, acted, and produced in it. Produced the whole thing. Oh no okay. way! All right. So okay, I'll check it, it out. Yeah, send it to me for sure, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I know where I'm, I messed up, and I know, and I know where like okay, that's a mistake. But you know what though, man? It was one of those things. It was a a project, a uh, passion for me. It was right. loosely based on a true story, so I did it for me. And it's like, like you know, I, I always start stuff and never finish. I start a screenplay and never finish it. And so I said, you know what? I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do a short movie. I'm gonna do a short film, and that was one of my life's goals. And I completed it. I did it, edited it. I, I had a buddy edit it, but I shot it. I directed. I like directing actually more. When I had to yeah. act, I was like, oh my god. So I like acting. So I like directing. So man, so yeah, I'm gonna send it to you, and I just want to take a look at it. I'm, I'm I'll check it out. What uh, What do you have it on? Do you have a link, or do you have it up on YouTube or something? Or uh, no, no, I'll send you the link. Yeah, it's a, okay. it's right now. It's on on Film Freeway, but it's almost past the uh, eligibility part because it was like a. Uh, yeah, from last year. So it's almost past the LGBT. But yeah, I'll see. I guess it's 14 minutes, man. Okay. You know, 14 minutes. So if you get a chance, take a look at it. Yeah, no, I'll check it out for sure. Of course. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks bro. Thanks. Um, all right, man. I guess uh, I think we're going to wrap this up, brother. We're, we're good. That's almost, and it, there are no technical problems today. There were three man, delays and lags. 
It, dude, you it's taking it, me a month to figure it out. I feel I'm very I'm relatively proud of myself. I'm so yeah, you should, you should be, man. Yeah, it's like me putting up my Roku, my Roku. Yeah, whatever. dude, look at us. Look at us yeah. fucking taking, kicking ass and taking names. Fuck COVID. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're Fuck not COVID. keeping us down. Yeah, you can't keep us down, man. It's for Walmart <laughs> for life, baby. Well, can't keep us down. Can't keep us down. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my good friend, uh, Mr. BT, right there, man. There he is. Give it up for BT, everybody. Thank you man, so much for, for coming up. Thanks, thanks for, for having it. me, brother. I appreciate, appreciate it, man. It. Of course. Anytime. Anytime. That's my man, BT. Folks, you guys, again, as always, you've been great. Thanks for chiming in. I appreciate it. Uh, every uh, Monday through Friday, 6 o'clock, Quarantine Comedy. Uh, where's my... I don't know who tomorrow's guest is. There you go. I have no idea. Tomorrow is the let's see. Tomorrow is uh, let's check. I can check it. I got it right here somewhere. John DeCross is on Thursday. I'm aware of that. And tomorrow's guest is going to be. Oh, today's Wednesday. That means tomorrow is John DeCrosta. How stupid of me. I'm sorry. I apologize. John will give me shit for that tomorrow. I really look forward to it. If you don't know John DeCrosta, he's a very funny comic. Also works carnival, works all over the world. He's done a lot of stuff. Uh, he has been around also for many, many years, done a lot of great things. Very good friend of mine. Uh, also, ironically, a very big outdoor sportsman. He's really into uh, mechanical wheeled objects. He does. He's just mechanical skateboard. He's got a one wheel thing. He's got all kinds of stuff. He's one of those guys, but uh, he's a really good guy. Really funny guy. He'll be here tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for chiming in. Thanks for being here again. And as always, uh, dream of pinky. Lenny Schmidt Quarantine Comedy was created, produced, and is hosted by Lenny Schmidt. We live stream on YouTube at 6 p.m. Pacific every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Special episodes occasionally stream or are uploaded on Tuesday and Thursday. Every episode is also launched as a podcast and can be heard on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoyed the show, please like the video. If you really like it, share the video. If you really, really like it, please subscribe to the Lunch Mint Comedy channel on YouTube. You'll get updates on this and numerous other online comedy content that my dad produced. Check the info section below for detailed information on all of our guests. If you are a fan, you can follow and support them as well. Go to their page, like their content, buy their albums, purchase a shirt, any merch they may be selling. Anything you do will support performers will literally help save the arts. In fact, if you want to support this show financially, just go to LennySchmidt.com slash if you can or Venmo at Lenny Schmidt Comedy. If you donate as little as $1 or as much as $10,000, it will help pay for the stuff my dad keeps breaking. If you can't pay for the comedy content, that's okay. COVID sucks for all of us. Enjoy the free show. If you want to find a way to support what we do, just subscribe to Lenny Schmidt Comedy channel on YouTube. That really helps a lot. Thank you for listening to my dad's show. And as always, dream of pinky. 